There's nothing more devastating than becoming a huge fan of a show only for it to end up cancelled or at major risk of cancellation because the network basically gave it no chance to thrive. The following shows or seasons for shows didn't get anywhere close to a fair shake no matter how they turned out quality wise. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com and these are 10 recent TV shows that were sent out to die. Number 10, Ms. Marvel. It might seem odd to talk about a Marvel Cinematic Universe show as being sent out to die but you have to consider the environments within which the recent Ms. Marvel series was released. Ms. Marvel aired through June and July of last year with its first three episodes releasing the very same day that the latter three episodes of Disney's Obi-Wan Kenobi series were also released. Unsurprisingly, audiences gave preference to Star Wars while Ms. Marvel's ratings became the lowest of any MCU Disney Plus series to date. But Disney only have themselves to blame for it not performing better because how could a relatively niche Marvel character possibly stand a chance against Obi-Wan freaking Kenobi? Scheduling the two series to air on the same day proved all the more bad given that Ms. Marvel provides a direct lead-in to the upcoming The Marvels movie. And yet, from how Disney treated it, you'd assume it was a random standalone spin-off without any universal import whatsoever. Plus, Disney's mistreatment of the show may reflect poorly on their programming in general, and the company might take it as a sign of the kinds of shows people want and don't want, instead of the fact that they themselves basically kicked it off the shortest plank of the Disney Plus ship. Number 9, The Pentaveret. Though he's kept a lower profile in recent years, Mike Myers remains a supremely popular comedian per his legacy working on SNL, Wayne's World, Austin Powers and Shrek. And so Netflix should have been screaming from the rooftops that they had commissioned a new dark comedy series from Myers, The Pentaveret, which saw him undergoing major physical transformations to play eight separate characters. Yet the streamer barely made a peep when Myers' show dropped last May, suggesting they had little faith in it making much of a dent with its viewer base. And while The Pentaveret ultimately received negative reviews from most critics, the general audience response was considerably kinder for those who actually bothered to watch it, that is. Given that you'd barely know the new Mike Myers hotness existed at all, and I certainly didn't, it was no surprise that the show didn't even crack Netflix's English language top 10 on the week of its release. While The Pentaveret was ultimately a limited series which didn't need a second season, it's still a shame that one of the most iconic comedians of all time had his latest work dumped on streaming with no fanfare whatsoever. Number 8, Westworld Season 4. Given that Westworld is one of HBO's gemstone prestige shows, it was depressing to see the network air its recent fourth season with a no noticeably scaled back marketing push. Despite the season being produced for a stonking $160 million, making it one of the most expensive seasons in TV history, you'd barely know it from HBO's bafflingly quiet promotion surrounding the show. Whilst previous seasons the premiere felt like an event that was loudly hyped for months, many fans reported they had no idea the new season had premiered until after the fact. But to rub salt into the wound, Westworld was also removed in its entirety from HBO Max the very next month, with Warner Brothers seeking to license the show to other the streamers to further cut costs. Disgusting. Number 7, Made for Love, Season 2. HBO's dark comedy sci-fi series Made for Love premiered in April 2021 to rave reviews, and though it wasn't a huge word of mouth hit, it evidently moved the needle enough for HBO to greenlight a second season. Yet you couldn't be blamed for failing to notice that Season 2 came and went, the season's eight episodes being quietly released with minimal marketing last spring. Despite being generally well received, Season 2 just didn't pick up any traction at all, with considerably less outlets bothering to review it and it barely producing any ripples on social media. The writing was on the wall that HBO had basically given up on the show already and merely completing contractual obligations as was confirmed when they cancelled Made for Love less than a month after season 2 finished airing. And it also suffered the same fate as Westworld being removed from HBO Max in December so it could be licensed out elsewhere. Again, disgusting. Number 6, National Treasure Edge of History. National Treasure Edge of History was basically doomed from the moment that Disney confirmed it would be a soft reboot without the presence of the movie franchise's feature attraction, Nicolas Cage. Instead, it focused on a young group of new adventurers whilst roping in Harvey Keitel and Justin Bartha to reprise their roles from the film series. But before cameras had even started rolling, fans of the two hit movies widely parroted the phrase no cage, no sale on social media, demonstrating how vital a piece of the puzzle the actor truly was. Edge of History ultimately premiered on Disney Plus in December to wildly mixed reviews from critics and considerably more negative notices from fans. Though concrete viewing figures are hard to find, it's reasonable to assume that few have stuck around for all 10 episodes. Between the show's quality, reception, and Disney's relatively underwhelming attempt to market it as an exciting adventure series worth caring about, it's tough to picture Edge of History getting renewed for a second season. Number 5, 1899. 1899 was admittedly decently hyped by Netflix and fans on social media in the weeks leading up to its release. The big problem though, despite the series receiving strong reviews, it was released 
released at a terrible time for numerous reasons. First and foremost, it hit Netflix just six days before the Adam Family spin-off series Wednesday, which promptly became a record-breaking rating smash and basically sucked all the oxygen out of the room. Beyond that, putting a complex cerebral show out during the middle of the World Cup and a few weeks before Christmas, when people perhaps didn't have the time to sit down and devote their full attention to such a challenging series, basically doomed it from the get-go. As such, it was little surprise that despite posting initially solid viewership, 1899 had a dismal season completion rate of just 32%, prompting Netflix to cancel it just six weeks later. There was no time at all for the series to build an audience, and that Netflix didn't give it the time it deserved is absolutely mind-boggling. Number four, Hunters, season two. Okay, hands up if you knew that season two of Hunters was released on Amazon Prime in the middle of January. Anyone? The conspiracy thriller series premiered in February 2020 to mixed reviews, but quickly became one of the streaming service's most watched original shows, ensuring that a second season was given the green light. But even ignoring the almost three year gap between seasons, season two was dumped with basically a non-existent regard by Amazon for reasons that remain bafflingly unclear. Given that the first series became a word of mouth hit at the onset of the pandemic, it made no sense at all for them to drop the latest volume with all the enthusiasm of a bowel movement. Even though season two was designed as the series final season from the outset, failing to sell it as a long awaited grand finale was a huge mistake. No matter that season two received better reviews than its predecessor, most people had no idea it was actually coming out. Number three, Space Force Season 2. Space Force, the sci-fi sitcom co-created by The Office's Greg Daniels and his star Steve Carell, premiered to wildly mixed reviews in May 2020, yet evidently performed decently enough to warrant a second season. But given that this season featured just seven episodes compared to the first ten, many already suspected that Netflix had lost interest. Between this and the decision to move shooting from Los Angeles to Vancouver, it appeared that the streamer was aiming to produce Season 2 at a much lower price point, a choice that's ironically reflected in one of the season's episodes called Budget Cuts. Furthermore, Netflix made little effort to promote season two, which dropped out of nowhere, resulting in it only barely cracking the English language top 10 during release week. Even a mediocre Steve Carell starring comedy series should basically sell itself, and though Space Force's second season was largely deemed a solid improvement by critics, Netflix burned it off like it was an unsavory obligation. Number two, Too Old to Die Young. Amazon must have known what they were getting into when they hired Nicholas Winding Refn to produce a 10 episode crime series for their platform, Too Old to Die Young. Refn's ultra-violent, slow-moving series received mixed reviews from critics, and in a recent interview with Vulture to promote his new Netflix series Copenhagen Cowboy, the filmmaker flatly accused Amazon of burying the boundary-pushing show upon release. Refn said that Amazon took all of his marketing money away because they were afraid that the show would reflect badly on their platform. Claiming that it was going to make them look bad, Amazon decided to bury the show, apparently in Refn's words. Refn's retort, you can't bury a diamond. Indeed, the minor moral victory for Refn might be that the show is still actually talked about in cinephile circles almost four years later after its release, and seems destined to live on as a challenging cult classic despite Amazon's clear desire to pretend that it doesn't exist. Number one, Warrior Nun, season two. Netflix's fantasy drama series Warrior Nun premiered in July 2020 to decent reviews, but when season two dropped last November, it was considered a major improvement by most critics. Better still, it cracked the English language top 10 and went on to receive a 99% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes higher than any other show on the platform. But barely a month after season two was released, Netflix confirmed Warrior Nun's cancellation, a move that was met with significant backlash from fans who pointed out the near-perfect audience rating, how they passionately marketed the show on social media when Netflix wouldn't, and the disappointment of cancelling a popular series with LGBTQ themes. The Netflix released Warrior Nun in the midst of several other popular shows, namely The Day After the Crown and Two Weeks Before Wednesday, certainly didn't help. Fans made made Netflix Correct Your Mistake, all in capital letters no less, trend on Twitter following the cancellation announcement, though it's extremely unlikely that Netflix will capitulate and reverse their decision. Let's just hope that Warrior Nun gets picked up by another streaming service that might actually show it some respect. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below, which of these TV show cancellations or seeming cancellations hurt you the most, and of course let us know of any others that we missed. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Head over to whatculture.com for more content every day. I've been Cypher for What Culture, and have a good week.